Burnt chicken, lumpy gravy, inedible dessert. Welcome to my house. Uh, <laughs> my cooking resume is strewn with holiday disasters like those, but yours does not have to be. Top chef judge Gail Simmons is here. Her new book is Bringing It Home. Favorite recipes from a life of adventurous eating, and she's going to show us how to fix our cooking fails. Gail, yes. it's great to see you. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank right, you. So this is something I love to do because people get very worried about failing yes. in the kitchen when you don't have to panic. Top Chef is 15 seasons now? 15 seasons. 15, so you must have seen a lot of fails there. I mean, a lot of fails. Those are Top Chefs, yes, I mean, but even they can fail. But they go home because they do something wrong, right? That's <laughs> like what's, the whole point what of the are, show. Are there any major sins that jump out to you? I mean, there's been some bad sins over the years, but ultimately it's the same failures that I think we all fear in our own kitchens. Mm -hmm. Oversalting food or forgetting to season your food altogether, overcooking your meat or completely undercooking and serving yes. raw meat. That's the worst. Not good. Number one. Worst. I think that's actually worse than serving it overcooked, yes. depending on what kind of meat we're talking about. None of them would ever serve lumpy gravy. Uh, you know, it happens, but generally, no. I mean, if they're serving lumpy gravy, these are all professionals. Now, let me, I, I don't know anything about cooking, but if you have lumpy gravy, shouldn't you just add a bunch of water? Well, you can, but that won't necessarily take out the lumps. That will just thin it out. So if you well, have, then you stir briskly. You can, you, you're right. You can stir briskly, but sometimes you have like chunks of. You can have cornstarch or flour okay. that are really not coming out, no matter how hard you whisk. Mm -hmm. So my trick is always to pour it into a blender, you know, as high powered a blender as you have, and then buzz it on a high speed. We will make sure. To be like, when, can with you this. be more specific? The highest speed that you can do, like the puree, puree speed. Okay. Give it a buzz. Liquify. And that would generally, if it's strong enough, should really take the lumps out okay. and really aerate it. If it's still thick, you can also take a little bit more chicken stock or beef stock, depending on what the base of your gravy is, and pour a little in. Even so water. not water, not water. Okay. Even use water, <laughs> absolutely. But of course, the chicken stock chicken or the stock. stock will have more flavor. So, in, in just so I know, lumpy gravy is bad. Well, like you don't. the lumps are from flour that is stuck and clumped together, and they're not cooked. Okay. So you're going to get like a mouthful of flour. No okay. one wants that on the holidays. Okay. Overcooked chicken. Yes. Very familiar with this. You know, burnt chicken. I get it. you got to be careful. If you see it burning in the process of cooking, you can put some foil over it in the oven, and that should prevent it from burning any further. Okay. But if you take it out of the oven and it's really burnt, I mean, this one actually I've seen a lot worse. Mm -hmm. But if it's really burnt, just remove the skin. You can really just pull the skin off, and it might be a little dry and, un and overcooked underneath. Excuse my hands, but that's the way to do it. And then I actually would take a piece of the chicken off. You can take pieces off, and so this is a little dry. Like, this is definitely yeah. some dry chicken right here. It smells good, though. It does. I mean, roast chicken still is, like, my favorite thing in the world. So just use two, two forks, and using the tines, just pull it apart and shred the chicken mm -hmm. and make a really simple chicken salad. But you can dress it up so that it still feels festive for the holidays. So I have right here some shredded chicken. So you can't really moisten it again, but you well, can use it for something else. Yes, and I'm, I'm going to moisten it by adding dressing, and that's what's so great about making chicken oh. salad. A little salt and pepper right into my dressing. Here is just oil and red wine vinegar. You can use some mayonnaise, some mustard. You know, make your favorite dressing. I want to make sure that Oil, this is red wine vinegar, salt, salt and pepper. And pepper. That, that's, that's all, all that's in I have there. here. I'm going to give it a shake. And that's a dressing. I'm gonna add some flavoring too because chicken salad you can play with a little bit. So I have a little bit of cumin. You can add some cayenne, just Yum. a pinch, give it some flavor. Yep. Some fresh herbs like cilantro or parsley. Mm -hmm. There's. Does it matter when you buy that fresh at the uh, grocery store? You just use the little spices that are in your cabinet. Well, it depends. Fresh herbs, I think, you cannot replace. You can't. Dried herbs are not the same as fresh herbs. Fresh, green, this is cement. I say it's bring it up. It's a lot of up. extra work to go up and down the aisle and get all that green stuff and I chop mean, it up. It is. I mean, I it's so much easier because you can just do it. grab it out of the um, cabinet and just shake. That's true, but powder, you know, ground spices are one thing, but you can't get the fresh flavor of fresh herbs without fresh herbs. Like on a scale of one to ten, how much would you say you lose by going into <laughs> things out of the cabinet? <laughs> just well, thing. you just can't get, I mean, dried oregano is never going to taste like fresh oregano. Okay. Same with mint and dill and those kind of things. That's starting to look good. Well, see, this is what happened. I added that, that salad dressing and now I've moistened it up. I've added yeah. some of that moisture back see, into the delicious. salad and I can make little toasted crostini with it. Very cute. Dress it up, a little more fresh herbs on top and it's a perfect appetizer. Sold. There you go. Okay, I'm going to try it. Yeah, and take some chicken and and we've got booze on the set yes because it's a day that ends in why yes. booze are important for many reasons um but when you over salt things here's a neat little trick i have a Juicy. few reasons there you go it's right it's totally mm -hmm. moist 
A few ways to, to fix oversalting. And oversalting can happen in a lot of ways. You put too much in at one point, or you put too much in at the beginning, and then you weren't thinking, you add a little or more later. Or you make the mistake of believing your sugar is your salt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah my brother problem. used to problem. do that to me in the mornings with my cereal when I was growing up. <laughs> Not nice. So if you oversalt things, one of the things you can do is serve it with sparkling wine or sparkling water. If it's oh. a little oversalted, if you drink it with champagne, I will not in, engage oh, right I now. Oh, yeah. a th Congratulations. There's a, there's a human in here. But if you serve it with sparkling water or sparkling wine or champagne, every time you take a sip of the champagne, it's sort of, it's effervescent in your mouth and it cleanses your palate. So it's not it just to get them so hammered salty. that they can't tell that it's well, salty. Well, it's also to get them hammered. <laughs> oh, it's a great. And then no one's gonna complain because you did the cooking I'll, anyway. I'll, I'll take you can yours. Both. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Another way to work with oversalting food, there's a few things you can do. I have a soup here. It's a chickpea and lentil soup that I made. And if I add a little extra pureed chickpeas, you know, take chickpeas, puree them, do not add any seasoning, but add a little bit to your soup and stir it in, you know, they're very neutral and they will diminish mm -hmm. the salt. Or you can slice a piece of potato, put it into your soup and simmer that over the stove for about 15, 20 minutes and that will Act like a sponge and, um, and exactly. How and big a piece salt. of potato do we have to use? I would just take like a big slice. Do you have to like peel it first? No, okay. just throw it in because you're going to take it out before you I am here it. for you. There Come you on. go. You know you were That's, thinking it too. These are good questions. All right, what's the last one? If you one? oversalt vegetables, I've oversalted my squash, let's say, that I'm making for a squash salad. Serve it. I would take some mozzarella. Serve, I would slice it up, let's say, serve it with some mozzarella or some fresh or um, or dried ricotta salata mm -hmm. because it's very milky and creamy. And you can, can I get that in the grocery store unsalted. or just ask for Absolutely. ricotta salata? Yes. Okay. This is fresh ricotta, but if you get the salata, which is dried, you can use a vegetable peeler and just peel it. But because it has salt in it, but it's still a very milky cheese. That one sounds too complicated. Forget that one. What are we doing with <laughs> the pies? I'm intimidated. <laughs> I'm just going to put some mint over there and a little oh. dressing. Oh. And then you have a beautiful salad. And if you serve it with that mozzarella, the mozzarella will take away some of the salt. Last but not least. Pie. Overburnt, burnt pie. Mm. This is a rasp grater. You just take it, and if it's just a little spot that's oh. burnt, you can literally, you know sometimes you do that with toast, you just scrape Is that off. what that thing is for? Well, no, but I'm making oh. it for this. <laughs> but let's say if in this instance, yes, you can literally just put it over the burnt spots, and it takes some of the burnt spots away. But if it's really, really burnt, and you cannot recover, two options. Cut off the top altogether and just cover it with whipped cream. That's no a great No one knows tip. the wiser, and that is a good looking pie. All right, I have a question for you, just as long as I have you here. Sure. When I'm serving breakfast and I want to make an omelet, how do I make it a flat white omelet instead of an enormous fluffy yellow omelet, which I don't like? Well, if you want white versus yellow, you take the yolks out. But you oh. know, that's the first thing. <laughs> that's the first thing. Oh. Make it you can't make it white if you put the yolks in the omelet. Okay. I think we should do some one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be good. We're going to do some personal training after. Oh, God. I'm getting called in for extra help. <laughs> Consider me like your, your trainer, your personal trainer. That, okay. Not getting the reference still. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All these tips are at today.com slash Megan Today. And you can see Gail on Top Chef Thursday nights on Bravo. Again, her book is Bringing It Home. Favorite recipes from a life of adventurous eating. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.